So let's go through some examples. Here is a high myopic astigmatic eye, which was targeted from monovision to minus 150, but ended up slightly overcorrected. The topography looks nice and regular and symmetrical. Here's the pre-enhancement OCT, showing that the smile interface was at a minimum at 122 microns, even though it had been programmed to 135 microns. The LASIK flap that we planned would therefore be at 100 microns, and the maximum epithelium measured by OCT was 62 microns within the central zone of the cornea. So we are, in this case, by planning a 100 micron flap, we are 38 microns clear of the epithelium, which is eight standard deviations. We are 22 microns clear of the minimum point in the stromal interface of the original smile, which is more than four standard deviations. And so statistically, this is a appropriate flap depth, again, according to the standard protocol of programming 135 and always doing the enhancements at 100. So this is an example illustrating how even if there are imprecisions in the original smile procedure and imprecisions of the LASIK procedure, you can still be quite certain that you're not going to get problems in terms of the lamellar interfaces. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the technique for lifting the flap when one is doing LASIK over smile because actually we've learned to modify our flap lifting technique, which is always a bimanual technique with the Visumax, but instead of going from hinge downward, we are now doing this in the opposite direction and I'll show you in a minute why, but essentially it's because we're trying to avoid the chance of the tip of the dissecting instrument going in through the flap edge and then ending up through the small incision in the smile interface. And I have some unfortunate examples of that to show you as well. So this is a left eye, and the first thing we're doing here is we're taking our iris spatula type instrument and scoring the edge of the LASIK flap as cut by the femto in the lower portion, at the lower third, infrotemporally. This is going to hold the globe there. The second step is to go across, leaving about a third of the flap undissected inferiorly, so that we can poke through at the 7 o'clock position, insert the second dissecting instrument there. The second dissecting instrument is then used to dissect superiorly towards the hinge. And you can see here that we're taking a first bite that is large enough that it is going to go under and over the position of the incision of the original smile procedure in order that the tip doesn't have the chance of diving or slipping into the original incision beneath the flap and into the smile interface. And then finally we take more bites and once the upper two-thirds of the flap interface is dissected, we then go and dissect the pseudo-hinge that we have created by not dissecting the inferior third of the flap initially. Here's a video demonstrating the technique. So we have the bubble pattern that looks pretty routine. Obviously you're watching this like a hawk, you don't want to see anything odd on the bubble pattern. We score the side infrotemporally. We go across, punch through. Insert the second instrument. Use a pseudo hinge to pull against as we're dissecting towards the hinge. And then finally we dissect the pseudo hinge. Lift the flap. Perform the ablation. And again, return the flap. This is a standard LASIK process. Flap repositioning technique, there's a lot of opinions on this, but our technique is to use extremely high pressure, high volume, but short, temporally short, irrigation in order to get all particles out without hydrating the stromal component of the flap and to lay it down in a primary position based on the 
marks that we placed there before surgery with a secondary flap repositioning performed a few minutes later at the slit lamp with heavy fluorescein in the eye to ensure that the flap is 100% distended in its bed with zero microfolds and no gap or no gutter whatsoever at the end of the case. And here, just for illustration, we did an OCT about an hour after the enhancement, very nicely showing the LASIK flap interface above the cap interface. And one day post-op, of course, everything looks nice and healed up. The three months results here were pretty much on target. I was rendered exactly myopicized as expected and a nice regular topography. <laughs>